Hi, welcome to The Mixing Touch. Thanks for dropping by my bar. I'm Alex and I'm here to show you how to make luxury cocktails in the comfort of your own home. Today we're going to be mixing up this iconic American classic, the Dry Martini. This one in particular is called Your Martini and you'll see why in a minute. And this classic American cocktail consists of two ingredients plus a garnish, we'll get to that later. Basically just vermouth and gin. You can also make it with vodka, but for this I'm gonna stick with gin because that's the more classic variation. And for the vermouth, I went with Noile Prat. And the gin is more of a subjective choice. Personally, I'm going with Tanqueray 10 because I really love the citrus notes that come through. Tanqueray 10 is distilled with fresh lemons, limes, and grapefruits. I made another video where I walked through my top five gin selections and I covered this in a little more detail if you want to check that out. And I highly encourage you to experiment and try out different gin varieties for yourself and see which one you like best. And that's exactly why this is called your martini as opposed to the perfect martini. I don't think the perfect martini exists because it varies from person to person. One of the biggest mistakes that people make with a martini is just not keeping everything at the right temperature. The vermouth should always be kept in the fridge because it's perishable. The gin, on the other hand, does not need to be refrigerated or frozen. Start with a mixing glass that's been kept in the freezer for a few minutes or in the fridge overnight. And I have these two jiggers that are gonna help me measure everything out perfectly. And I got my measurements from a recipe by Tony Abu Ghanem in The Modern Mixologist. Tony is a world-renowned mixologist and based on Tony's recipe, we use two and a half ounces of gin. So I have an ounce and a half measurement here. and a one ounce measurement, making it two and a half ounces of gin. And we're also gonna need three quarters of an ounce of vermouth. What I love about this jigger is it has a three quarters of an ounce marking on top. And I've seen recipes where they tell you to just throw a little dash of vermouth or just use the vermouth to rinse the ice and then throw it out. I personally think that vermouth is a very, very important ingredient in here. And you don't want to ignore it or be afraid of it. You should embrace it. And we add our ice at the end. This is to prevent the drink from getting too diluted. And this drink is stirred, not shaken, unlike James Bond. The reason is because this consists of clear liquids and pure spirits and you don't want to bruise it or introduce bubbles. You want to keep it as clear as possible. And the other reason is that you won't dilute it as much by stirring it. You stir it gently about 20 times to the left and 20 times to the right. And we use a really, really ice cold martini glass for this. I've kept this in the fridge for a few hours. You can keep it in the freezer for a couple of minutes. And we take this julep strainer and we use that for straining. And finally the garnish. I'm using large Spanish olives because that's what Tony's recipe calls for. And they actually make the drink look so much better and I just love the taste of olives. But again, this is one of those things that's a matter of personal preference. And if you prefer to use lemon peels instead, that's totally fine. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up down below. I really love seeing all those likes. They make me feel warm and fuzzy. And if you're interested in seeing me mix up a martini with vodka instead of gin, let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe to The Mixing Touch and check out some of my other popular videos like the Tropical Jamaican Sunset.